Mark, two years ago, we were at CinemaCon, yeah. Caesar's Palace, the Coliseum, 70-foot Claris screen. And at the time, we talked about what the development cycle was like and how you came about developing and building and manufacturing that screen. Now we have a new screen, Hugo. What is it and what was the development process like? So, great memories of stood in front of that Claris with you, by the way. It was, <laughs> it was outstanding. Um, and what a great screen and thrilled it's back there this year. But here we are in LA in front of Hugo. 2018, we started to look at the concept of laser speckle and we took out a patent for a speckle-free screen. And that really got us started on the path of new investment in screen development. Because it was very obvious that the technology to reduce speckle was very different from anything we'd been using for the past 90 years. We invested heavily in new scientists. Okay. Different backgrounds, optical engineering, chemistry to develop screen surfaces that can reduce speckle and that was the journey we went on. We had COVID. In a way COVID took away a lot of the day-to-day -day operational pressures so the scientists could actually concentrate on developing this screen. And so when you say it's it's a laser you're saying this is a laser screen then because if you're making a screen for speckle speckle is comes from lasers this is a laser screen. So, speckle is a well-known phenomena in optical engineering. What laser projectors have done is they've brought speckle to the attention of far more people in our ecosystem. And with that, there's been a requirement to reduce speckle on screen. And that's what we think we're able to do with Hugo. We can dramatically reduce that speckle and in our testing, we do a combination of testing. Right. So we've got the laboratory. In the laboratory, we've got the latest photonics engineering equipment that allows us to measure speckle contrast ratios, as they're called. We can look at each individual wavelength. So we can really dive very deep into the, the science. But speckle can be very much, once you've seen it, it doesn't go away. So right, okay. we've got to get that into the theatre, we've got to do testing in theatre. And realistically, we've been testing these early screens since around 2020, 2021. There have been no-name screens in a variety of auditoriums just so that we can get in front of them right. and take a look at them. And what we've done is we've always benchmarked against our two leading screens, Claris 170 in the Coliseum, and a product called Perlux 180. We always benchmark against those two screens. So everything we talk to when we talk about speckle reduction is against that benchmark. Very difficult at this stage to give absolute figures, but I consider the speckle reduction to gain ratio, we've seen a 40% improvement with this screen, which we've never got close to with the old technology. And is that what you mean when you say this is a laser screen? I mean, is that essentially, we're, we're talking about speckle, we're talking about, uh, I mean, we're here at Regal LA Live in Los Angeles. There's an RGB projector here. So you're, that's, is that what a laser screen means to exhibitors or to the public even? Yeah, so I think laser projection is way ahead of its rollout cycle for me. They, the projector manufacturers have done a great job rolling out laser projection and they've brought out a number of different models. So we've got the laser phosphor, we've got the RB and we've got the RGB. They have done great jobs in working with cinema operators to deploy laser projectors. But with that, the phenomena of speckle what we wanted to be able to do was take that problem away from the cinema operator and the projector manufacturer. And that's why we're so excited about Hugo, because we believe that there's that demonstrable reduction in speckle. 
And when you hear, oh, it's a laser screen, it must have a shaker. In this case, no shaker. No shaker. With Hugo, yes. And uh, the words that some of my colleagues, Laurent Espitalier, Richard Mitchell, Matt Johans, have explained it to me, they've said it's a softer speckle. And yeah. Or a softer hotspot. It could be a softer hotspot, but yes, that's very much what we're, we're seeing when we're in front of the screens. And it's really trying to back that observation up with scientific data. And we just, as I mentioned, we've invested heavily in the R&D, but we've opened a new innovation centre in the UK. And on the 7th of February, we opened up a new optical engineering laboratory in Nice, south of France. So okay. we're really working on the optics of the screen, and the phenomena of laser speckle. Well, okay, so we're talking about speckle, which comes from laser projection, although I guess all light could technically yeah. do that, but certainly it's more prevalent with laser, yeah. and certainly it's pre prevalent with RGB laser, and so, does that mean Hugo is only an RGB laser screen for 3D presentations? I would say that's not the way I would look at it. I see Hugo as a screen developed for all laser projection. And all our testing has been done in front of RGB, RB, laser phosphor. And we've seen improvements in front of all three types of laser projector but it's outstanding with xenon it really is it's a great screen in front of xenon and for a great many people we believe that they can future proof themselves by going with hugo if they've not quite made their mind up yet to switch from xenon to rb or xenon to rgb this is a screen for them because it gives you that future proofing so you can use it for 3D with a xenon projector. Then. Absolutely. Now you mentioned the development process of Hugo and in doing so you work with scientists, you work with manufacturers, you work with exhibitors, you work with the Hollywood community. What was their input? What were they saying? So for us working with that broader group of people is, is really important because Around the world, we're seeing lasers deployed at different, um, different points of entry. So if, if you look in China, the majority of the laser projectors are RGB lasers. If we look in Europe, the majority are RB laser phosphor. And here in the US, we're seeing a great number of RGB. So it was important that we understood how people were looking at their future deployments of laser projectors to make sure that we could get Hugo really targeted at giving them an immediate benefit. So that was important. Working with projector manufacturers and educational institutions, really important to get the measurement of speckle nailed down. There is that quantitative part, but there's that qualitative part as well. So being able to work, understand how projector manufacturers look at it, understand how in educational institutions, universities, research institutes, how they look at it, and really trying to come up with a Harkness measurement for, for speckle. And again, I think credit to colleagues around the world that they were able to develop that Harkness methodology that gives us that benchmark and that's that's so important for us the hollywood community we we had the most wonderful experience back in 2012 2013 when we looked at claris and we got some superb input from major cinema operators here in the united states and they really encouraged us to get in front of hollywood studios and show the studios what Claris could do. And the impact of that was really overwhelming. So it made sense that with a product like Hugo, we'd invite 
the big studios to come and come and look at that screen. And part of the reason that this one's in LA is so that we can engage face to face with the, the Hollywood community. And as you're hearing them, you're taking their input in and then improving the screen from that? Yeah, and I, again, I think one of the interesting things for us was the studio saying, wow, the contrast. And it was very significant. They understand speckle, and they understood immediately the reduction in speckle. But what they pointed out to us was the contrast, the blacks in the shadows, the clarity was so much better than a traditional silver screen. We've, we've done some of the um, scientific measurements. Some of our uh, partners have done the, the same measurements for us. And we're seeing a sort of four to eight percent improvement in contrast ratio, which really can make a big difference in terms of the presentation. And with laser, the contrast ratio is very high, so 4% of 100 is not that high, but 4% of something that's, you know, three, 6,000 to one, all of a sudden you're, you're in a much higher... And, and that's the point. Um, we, when you have the studios telling you, we can see the difference, you know, we, we went away and said, right, let's, let's prove what that difference is. Let's put the science behind that difference. You, you wanted to measure the difference. We wanted to measure the difference, and we've been able to do that. And again, I think that whole advancement in our optical engineering and our ability to measure, it really means that we can stand in front of a product like Hugo, and not only can I say it's a great product, we've got all the data, we've got all the measurements to back that up. And they're not just the measurements that I did. These are measurements that have been done with people outside the industry, inside the industry, acknowledged as leaders in their field. That data is all available. So it's, it's not Harkness data per se, it's data that was given to Harkness by third parties. And what, what, we, what we then did, we've got a facility in France. We sent our team over to France with all of those learnings that had come in from other institutions and we said, right, let's do exactly what they did and let's make sure that we can see what they saw. We can measure right. the way they measured and that's what we did. And that really, again, for me, I, I was expecting to be talking to people about a 15% reduction in speckle. When you look at the way that other institutions had measured speckle and then we went and did similar, I can now say 30 to 40 percent reduction. Based on these third party measurements. Based on these third party measurements. And that's okay. really, really important to us. Well, you mentioned that this, the development of Hugo began in around 2018. How long will it be until the next gen generation of products? Will it take another six years to get to Hugo 2.0 or whatever Harkness is working on, whether it be a 2D screen, a 3D screen, because Hugo is a 3D screen. So it's definitely meant for 3D. Yeah, I, look, the, the technology was originally, back in 2018, we were looking at a a speckle-free 2D screen and the patents that we've in place set us off in that direction. What we were able to uncover and develop was both a route for 2D screens and 3D screens. We've come out with Hugo as a 3D screen but if you, you know, if you sit on axis and look at the screen it's as white as our Perlux screen. So it really is one of the whitest 3D screens we've ever produced. That really is important because it does mean that for some cinema operators around the world who want to simplify their supply chains, rather than having to take two types of screens, right. there's the potential to just take one type of screen. A lower gain version of Hugo is imminent. Um, I wouldn't say for Cine Europe, but I would think from maybe 1st of October, 
that product will be available to ship. And boy, am I excited about the new generation of 2D screen. Um, so you're saying Hugo, uh, the, the lower gain version of Hugo, yeah. which is a 3D screen, uh, and it's a 2D screen as well. Yeah, so it's a 2D. Yeah. So it's, I guess in a way, it's not a 3D screen. It's a 3D capable screen. Yeah, that'd be a way to describe it. Um, that will be available starting r roughly this year, 2024. Yeah. Correct. And but why lower gain? What why? In other words, what's the benefit of going with a lower gain screen as opposed to a higher gain screen? Geography, believe it or not, a big influence for us is Europe. Um, obviously, our birthplace was the UK. Our largest operations are in France, so Europe's an important market for us. And what we find in the European environment is a demand for lower gain silver screens. Um, so our best-selling screens in Europe are Claris 1.7, okay. Precision White 1.4. If you come into the US, our best-selling screens are Claris 220, Claris 290, Perlux 180. So slightly higher gains. So it's important for us to marry that gain requirement, not just by geography, but by theatre design, theatre geometry, um, and that's what we're attempting to do. Uh, that's where I was going to head. It's not only geography then, it is uh, the theatre size in a way. Yeah. Uh, the need for uh, a larger auditorium to maybe have bigger gain or more gain. And look, you know, when, when we saw energy prices going through the roof, people wanted to reduce energy. And one of the ways that we've known you're able to do that for many years is by increasing the gain of the screen. Because yeah. you can lower the, the lamp, yeah, the, exactly. uh, the output. The output. So for us, you know, that uh, gain up, cost down, coming out of COVID, very important to our customers and something that we, we embrace. And that's, again, part of the reason that we've come out with the Hugo 2.2+. That you're seeing behind us, and so the next generation of products really is here already because you're talking about a, a lower gain Hugo, and then essentially Hugo being applied to a pure white, Correct. for lack of a better word, uh, screen where 3D will never be shown on. It's a non-3D capable screen. That's right. And is there anything beyond that, or are you allowed to say? Um, I. I the exciting thing for me is with our new uh, focus on innovation, technology and plenty of imagination, we've been able to explore ideas for cinema that wouldn't have been possible in 2012. So in 10, 11, 12 years, we've really changed our, our focus. And you and I were mentioning before we came in from the camera about Harkness budgets. Well, we're spending more on R&D innovation now than we've ever spent. And that's to produce groundbreaking technology like you do.